I showed up one day and uh, they had this little sign, um, get out. So I realized at that point that, you know, maybe all was not right uh, with the show. One day I was in the middle of my show when suddenly I was canceled. <laughs> Talk to you, John. I'm sorry to inform you. You've been canceled. That's what, wait a minute, this show's a hit. The kids love it and, and I'm getting laid a lot. I can't lose it. I... <laughs> sorry. Oh! Right afterwards I went down to Jersey Shore and uh, drank for a couple of weeks. And I'll tell you, that really straightens you out. You know, you'd think the opposite, but it actually helped. I do, uh, I do have one quick thing to say. I've got something to say to all those people who said that my show would never make it. Good call. Wow, how did you know that? That's amazing. They asked me if there were any other shows maybe I thought I could do, so I pitched them three ideas, and they were drunk, so I guess that helped. Uh, the first idea was uh, Beverly Hills 90210 combined with Star Trek. Teens in Space. I thought that was a good one. Didn't go very far. far. Uh, then it's like a little travel show. They already had, you know, MTV Sports, Dan Cortez, the whole thing. Uh, so I pitched a talk show, and they said fine. So I went off with a, a little friend of mine, and we sat in a room and smoked for two weeks, and uh, and came up with the talk show. It's a Miramax film uh, that had Drew Barrymore and Jennifer Beals in it, and I play a guy who's supposed to want to go out with both of them. Pretty tough role. You know, big stretch. Need a lot of acting lessons for that one. Uh, it was kind of low budget. You know, the catering was basically uh, English muffins and fluff which is a marshmallow-like substance that you can really build into almost anything. It's incredibly useful. There's a crack in the foundation of the building, a little fluff. Somebody needs a sandwich, a little fluff. We ran out of makeup, a little colored fluff. Goldie's a real nice lady, and she didn't have to be. You know, she's kind of at that level where, you know, most of my scenes were with her, and she basically could have said, like, tell Mr. Stewart that I won't have him look me in the eye. You know, but she wasn't. She was very cool, very human, and she would even help me out a bit, like, uh, you know, you have to hit a mark, you know, on set, you got to walk to your mark and then say your lines. So I was doing a lot of this. You know, cut, you're looking down, you know, I'd get a lot of that. So finally she leaned over and she went, count your steps. Smart lady, been around a long time. She probably used those same tips on Fletch. You know, there's history there. <laughs> My fantasy childhood, uh, I'd have been happening guy. Uh, I'd been this guy, Mike, who actually grew up three doors down from me, who had like chest muscles and almost like a beard in sixth grade, and all the ladies were pretty into him. <laughs> the reality of my childhood was I had this nose but a much smaller head, which I don't know if you can really visualize that, but not too appealing. <laughs> the reality of MTV is you turn it on thinking you're going to maybe catch the new Foo Fighters video, and it's singled out the most humiliating dating show in the history of dating shows. All right, uh, we've got categories up here. Let's see what you picked. Uh, I'll go with chest, Bob. All right, let's see chest. Big titties or little titties? Jeez, Bob, I don't really like little titties. Let's get rid of those. I love big titties. All right, all the little titty girls. You've got to walk past them now in the humiliating little titty walk of shame. I guess my fantasy date is someone who will listen to me, someone who's honest, funny, someone who will touch me where I go to the bathroom. Actually, that's the most important one. Touching me where I go to the bathroom. I'd say that's, yep, that's, let's see, sense of humor, honesty. Nope. Touch me where I go to the bathroom. <laughs> the reality of supermodels is, who knows, I never really talked to you long enough to figure it out. Yeah. The reality of supermodels is they're always dentching some, like, really creepy, older, chubby French guy named Clavois. And they go out with him and you can't really figure out why, other than the fact that maybe he's got a lot of cocaine and an enormous, uh, can I say, uh, I think you know where I'm going. Car. <laughs> Fantasy in New York City would be to live in peace with all different people in an apartment that's bigger than the one I have now. And you have a view of something other than that, you know, old guy that lives across the street that insists on watching television naked with the lights on and the blinds open. <laughs> the fantasy show business would be a business where Tootie is that her name? Tootie? Could be in Facts of Life for a really long time and then leave the show and not have everyone on the street run up to her and go, Hey, it's Tootie! You know, people would forget. They'd have a little short-term memory. And then you could go on and do your other show, whatever that is, single, living single, and people wouldn't keep going, Living single, isn't that that show with Tootie? And the real show business is you've got to kiss people's asses that you don't really respect all that much to try and get to the point where, for five years down the road, people will be going, Hey, it's Tootie! It's May 8th, the birthday of Don Rickles and former President Harry S. Truman. 
It's also No Socks Day and National Third Shift Workers Day. So everybody out there working from midnight to 8 a.m., go crazy, take your socks off for God's sakes.